Ah, hello. So in the uh, last video, I kind of decided to cut off the ending G code bit. Uh, yeah, because the starting G code took me <laughs> quite a long time to go through. So we had to cover bits and pieces about, well, real basics on what uh, what some G code is and uh, where you might find it in the various slices. So uh, I decided to just limit the last video to the starting G code. Uh, and now, so we're going to get to the ending G code. Uh, but before we get to the ending G code, I'm just going to quickly uh, show you some changes that I made to my starting G code, mostly because I set the, uh, when I did the last video, I was just doing it on a sort of dummy profile in Simplify 3D. And I thought, well, whilst I'm going through my starting G code here, I might as well tidy it up a bit. And uh, so that's what I did after the last video, I tidied it up. So we'll do a quick recap of just a couple of modifications I've made to that. Nothing really very serious. Uh, and then we can get into the ending G code. And uh, it seems <laughs> it seems that at least one person wants to see the uh, results of the starting G code. So right at the end, if you can, you know, contain your excitement for a few minutes right at the end there'll be a little video of the printer doing the starting g code and even another clip of it doing its ending g code so yeah looking forward to that <laughs> so let's let's get into it okay so like i said before moving on to the ending g code i'm just going to quickly run over some minor changes i've made uh tweaks because well i thought whilst i was doing this exercise i might as well tweak the one i've got um not a great deal of difference really in my starting g code here uh what have we got okay i've added in the t0 which may or may not be needed depending on your flavor of firmware i um yeah i don't believe it's needed in marlin for example but there's no harm in putting it in um so yeah i've added that and uh, what else okay yeah so basically what i've done is i've added the um m104 which starts to heat the hot end uh, but will then continue with the g-code instructions without waiting to get to that temperature uh, i've just moved that up so that it is before um, the nozzle moves itself to my off the bed position to do the priming uh, reason being well it saves about uh, three seconds probably uh the heated bed the heated bed the hot end is starting to get up to temperature a few seconds earlier uh yeah so not really much of a change um that's all the same i believe uh yeah so um i've discovered sometimes in the past and like yeah i'm not sure why and i'm not sure whether i imagined it but it seems that sometimes if you if you just put a, an m109 um, to set the temperature and wait. Um, sometimes it seems to cause issues if it's not preceded by an M104. Uh, not entirely sure why, uh, but I just always stick the M104 and the M109, then the same with the uh, heated bed, M140 and M190. Uh, I never just put, like, for example, an M190 by itself, I always put the M140 before it. Um, yeah, no, really, you know, I don't know why. It may, Maybe it's not needed. I don't know. I got it stuck in my head for some reason. And uh, seeing as it doesn't really do any harm, yeah, that's just the way I do it. Uh, so then, yeah, extrudes out uh, some stuff, and we will see exactly um, what this looks like at the end. For those that are interested in seeing a 3D printer doing some priming, um, uh, so then it moves into the priming area. It primes the line. None of this is any different to uh, the previous video. What I have done is I have, whilst it's moving back to the starting point to do the wipe, um, which I've updated, the eagle eyed among you, and I'm sure nobody noticed this, is that I put in X0, which of course I don't want to do because at this point on my printer, due to some phys physical obstructions, I can't go to X0. So it starts out, as you can see up here, at x24 so i move it back to x24 uh, whilst retracting a little bit of filament uh, 0.3 mil at the same time just to make sure it doesn't drag anything across uh, whilst it starts doing the print so that's all the updates there um, let's now dig into the topic of this video which is the ending script 
So pretty much like before, what I'm going to do is just put in a couple of comments and I'm not in this video going to go over what G code comments are and how you do them. If you want to see a little bit about a, a sort of very brief primer to G code, let's call it, uh, see the previous video, which I will leave a link to in the description. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple of comments in here and uh, an additional one here so that we can see exactly where our ending script or ending G code uh, ends up in the final G code file. Uh, so that'll be that for that. So we'll OK, uh, we're going to prepare to print and we will save it as a G code file and that'll do for now. We will then open that up in some kind of text editor with nice big font so you can see what's going on. And uh, right, we, so we scroll all the way down, ignoring all of the comments. In fact, we could ignore everything. There's our starting G code. So obviously we want to motor our way all the way down to somewhere near the bottom. And there we go. You can see this is where our ending uh, G code is inserted. So basically we can see what's happening before that, which is all of the printing stuff. It then does a minor sort of 0.8 mil extraction. And that's it. That's all it does. So, you know, this is where we now need to decide what we want to happen in our ending G code. Now, for me, basically all I want it to do is I want it to move out of where it was as quickly as possible, uh, because otherwise you can be left with a little bit of blobbing or scarring or something like that on the top of your print. If the nozzle sort of hangs around, obviously it's going to be oozing out a bit. So what I want to do is for the very first thing at the end of my print is to get that nozzle out of the way as quickly as possible, start extracting some uh, filament. And um, then once it's out of the way of the print, probably lift it right up to the top of the um, Z axis. And uh, then I want to extract, in my case, a lot of the time, and this is why I kind of need more than one or uh, yeah, G code starting and ending G code option. That's why I don't really like it built into the printer profiles in the slicer, because sometimes I want it to extract the filament completely if I finish printing for the day or whatever. Sometimes if I'm going to print more, I don't want it to extract all the filament. Anyway, that's just uh, my little issue. Um, but generally speaking, um, you know, if I want it to be, you know, if I'm finished printing for the day, I want it to extract out a whole bunch of filaments. So the filament comes right out of the nozzle, obviously uh, shut down the um, heaters, both heaters, and uh, sort of bring the heated bed forward so I can easily <laughs> extract my part. And uh, yeah, then I want it to shut down my printer. Now this is, you know, in the depths of time, you can go back and see a video where I've created a, a sort of auto power off from my printer that sort of rolled into some temperature monitoring systems as well. But effectively the M80 command um, will um, shut down my printer for me. So the very last thing I want it to do is to, uh, yeah, send that M80 command to shut the printer down again not in all cases, which is why I prefer the way that Simplify 3D does it is in that it's uh, the starting and ending G code is baked into each profile. So I can, you know, set up my profiles if I want, uh, you know, one to finish and uh, shut down. Then, yeah, I select that one anyway. So let's have a look at how we're going to go about uh, adding these uh, little functions into my ending G code. Let's skip on back to uh, Simplify 3D, exit out of the preview mode and edit the process, go to scripts, go to the ending script and uh, let's start putting some stuff in. Okay, so the first command I'm going to put in and I'll just paste it in for uh, speed and efficiency is a G1, which is a uh, movement command and it moves the X axis to position zero whilst simultaneously um, moving the uh, extruder minus three millimeters and doing all that very quickly. So the idea is it just gets it off of the, out of the way of the part um, and starts, you know, sucking some filament back up so we don't get left with any rubbish on top. And then what I'm going to do is uh, chuck in another movement command to take the Z axis all the way up to the top, which is 190 in my case, and also do that pretty quickly. 
And then next up I'm just going to retract a whole bunch of filament, in fact 100 mils. Um, yeah, basically that will extract all of the filament all the way through my hot end back out of the extruder and uh, let me, you know, put it back on the spool and put it away for storage. And then the next three things we'll do is we will turn off the uh, hot end temperature, basically setting it to zero, uh, turning it off. Do the same, oh, you can't really see that. Do the same M140 for the heated bed, and then an M107, which basically turns the fan off. Next couple of commands. Um, we've got another movement, which is basically bringing my Y axis, i.e. bringing the whole bed, uh, right to the front, just so that I can get to the part easier. And then an M84 uh, disables all the motors, basically powers it down. And uh, that could be about it. But in the cases where I want my printer to now power off, um, I have the option of putting in an M81. And I know that I said M80, that's not correct a minute ago. Uh, it's M81, uh, basically sends the signal to the uh, ramps PS on pin, uh, which triggers a whole bunch of things that you can find out about in uh, the video that I've linked. And what that does is it basically just shuts down my printer. So that's about all the my ending G code sorted now. Uh, yep, I think that's about it. So what we'll do is I shall OK that. In fact, I'll update my profile. I'll OK that. Um, and let's get the old G code out. And we'll call it, uh, yeah, we'll call it three. Why not? And uh, let's open up that new G code. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. Oh, not down to the bottom, down to the bottom. And there we can see our ending G code has been stuck in. So yeah, there's no real changes uh, before it or after it. Um, so that is it. Now, due to popular demand, I am now going to show a video of uh, the printer doing the starting G code. Uh, yeah, and then um, a video of it doing its ending G code. So uh, get braced for this supreme excitement about to happen. Okay, so here we go with the starting G code then. As you can see, the Z axis moving down, the probe senses, and it does its double tap just to uh, zero in. And now it's doing its uh, bed leveling measurements, which I've sped up as it's not particularly interesting. It is now extruding out 20 mil of uh, filament, which are also sped up, and it's now doing its little priming line, doing a wipe, and uh, yeah, going over and starting the print. So for all those naysayers out there, it does work. <laughs> Albeit that I had to change the X position because uh, yeah, it kind of hit that little nut thing. Uh, but anyway, corrected that now. And here we are with the ending G code. Well, we're not quite there yet. It's still printing this weird monstrosity here that you might find out what on earth this is all about sometime in the future. So it's got to the end and uh, yeah, it sort of shoots straight off whilst retracting the filament and uh, goes up to the very top of the Z axis just to yeah get things clear. And then once it's uh, got up to the top there, it's going to extract, I think, 100 mil of filament or retract, sorry, 100 mil of filament, which will uh, yeah take it all the way out of the nozzle so I can just roll it back up on the spool. Now it's done that, you can see that it's moving the Y axis forward and uh, turns everything off. And that is my ending G code. There you go then, there is my uh, starting G code and my ending G code. Now, as I've said, uh, you know, a number of times through these videos, apart from a couple of necessaries, which might be homing the uh, printer before the print starts and doing your bed leveling measurements, everything else is kind of just there to tweak, optimize, and uh, just do some things automatically that you find yourself having to do manually every time, like something to do with priming the filament, um, lifting the bed up at the end, turning it off, all those sort of things. So they're very much, those things are very much dependent on, you know, what you want to happen. But also where there's movements concerned uh, on the bed, they're very much dependent on your bed. Like, in a, you know, <laughs> like for example, on uh, my printer, I have those silly little nuts hanging all over the place, which I haven't really done anything about yet. 
which means that if the uh, y-axis is right uh, at the extreme, I can only move the x-axis so far over. Um, so, you know, translating those things onto your printer might make no sense whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, but uh, the basic principles are there. Uh, the most important thing is get yourself over to the Rep Rep Wiki uh, page on G-Code. Have a look to see what you can do, which is, well, pretty much anything the printer can do, really. And, uh, yeah, plug away at it. Um, I think that just about does it.